Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Deben County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 87. This is the Friday, February 4th, 2022 edition of Library Connections. And just a note before we jump into Library Connections this week, I'm recording this on Thursday, February 3rd, and I don't quite have as much time to finish the narration as I would like because of the incoming storm. The library will be closing at noon today, and they haven't officially made the call, but they will have, of course, about time this airs. I suspect the library will be closed tomorrow, so I have to finish this by noon today. So apologies for any little audio typos. I'd like to make it smoother, but I'm running out of time. So having said that, let's move on to the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife raised in a violent home attempts to halt the Cycle of Abuse. At number two, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Lowen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series. And she uncovers a horrifying truth. At number three, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. A movie icon recounts stories of her loves and career to a struggling magazine writer. At number four, Savage Road by Christine Feehan, the seventh book in the Torpedo Inc. series. Jael is committed to Savage, who is a sadist in the bedroom. At number five, Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Kate Collins and Miles Archer, an airline pilot, think they can handle a no-strings-attached arrangement, but they can't. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week at number one, Red Handed by Peter Schweizer. The author of Profiles in Corruption portrays a conspiracy of how the Chinese government might infiltrate American institutions. At number two, How to Be Perfect by Michael Schur. The creator of The Good Place incorporates works by various philosophers to examine ethical questions and moral issues. And it doesn't say it there, so I feel like I should note it. The Good Place is a TV series, or I think it's a canceled TV series by now. In any case, it's a TV series. So moving right along at number three, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. At number four, the 1619 Project, edited by Nicole Hannah-Jones, Caitlin Roper, Elena Silverman, and Jake Silverstein. Viewing America's entanglement with slavery and its legacy, an essay is adapted and expanded from the New York Times Magazine. And at number five, Enough Already, by Valerie Bertinelli. The actress and TV personality describes her personal setbacks and difficult journey to self-acceptance. A first recommended read for this week is the new novel, The City Beautiful, by Aidan Pulidras. This is set in 1893, by the way. Pulidras seamlessly blends a murder mystery with Jewish folklore in this haunting historical fantasy. Alter Rosen, 
a 17-year-old Jewish immigrant to America, works as an apprentice typesetter, trying to scrape together enough money to bring his mother and sisters over from Romania. But Jewish teenage boys keep turning up dead while Chicago enjoys its grand world's fair. And when Yakov, Alter's roommate and secret crush, becomes one of the victims, usually unassuming Alter must find a way to bring Yakov's spirit peace or risk his debit taking over. Alter's search for the killer reunites him with bold and charming Frankie, a fellow Jewish immigrant who's willing to steal and gamble for success and stability. Polidros offers an unflinching depiction of anti-Semitism abroad and in Chicago, while capturing Jewish internal communal tensions with nuance. Readers looking for finely wrought historical fiction with fully realized characters and a thrilling pursuit of justice are sure to be satisfied by Alter's story. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. And another great book for my to-read list. Our second recommended read for this week is also a novel. It's called God of Mercy by Akenji Nikola. Nikola's debut feels like a dream or a fable or something in between. The main character, Ijoma, is unable to speak. Though her voice is gone, Ijoma communicates through sign language as well as her ability to levitate in communion with her village's god. While the rest of the village loves her and her magic, her father, Ophodile, believes she is cursed. In a desperate effort to save her and save face, Ophodile allows a Christian minister to take her away with promises to heal her. His methods include caging the poor girl and driving out non-existent demons. How can Ijoma free herself from captivity? Will she ever be able to fly free again? The vestiges of colonialism run deep throughout this novel, as well as themes of forgiveness and compassionate love. Nicola uses epistolary passages, as well as lyrical prose, to tell a personal yet magical story. Recommended for fans of the I've been trying to pronounce this name all morning and I just can't quite get it. Apologies to the writer and professor. It is something close to Nnedi Okorafor, who is the author of the novel Remote Control. And so this line should say, I'm gonna try it one more time and you'll bear with me, I'm sure. Recommended for fans of Nnedi Okorafor's Remote Control, good heavens, I've got it. Or, Nego Bose, The Empress of Salt and Fortune. Those novels are both good too. So three novels to check out. And I actually finally got the pronunciation right. That's fantastic. So moving right along. Which is the new novel, Light Years from Home by Mike Chen. The audio is read by Emily Wu Scheller. Chen delivers an emotional blend of space opera and family drama. 15 years ago, Jacob Sho joined the war efforts of the alien coalition that abducted him from Earth. Now, dire circumstances force him to return home and face the family left behind. Jacob's disappearance devastated the Sho family sending sisters Evie and Cassie on divergent paths. Evie spent those 15 years researching possible alien sightings, while Cassie has always believed that Jacob 
simply ran away. And that Evie has abandoned her responsibilities to chase a delusion. Jen captures both the love and the friction of their sibling relationship when Jacob returns with a cover story about backpacking through Europe confirming Cassie's theory. An element of doubt creeps in, however, when the FBI shows up wanting to question Jacob as part of a domestic terrorism investigation. Cassie and Evie agree to help, but Evie breaks her promise when given the opportunity to prove that Jacob was abducted. Jen adroitly explores the contradictory emotions typical of sibling dynamics and the holding pattern of familial roles against the distant backdrop of UFO investigations and intergalactic battle. The result is sure to keep readers burning their pages. Moving on to our second audiobook recommendation for this week. This one's called The Winter Rose by Melanie Dobson. The audio is narrated by Nancy Peterson. Edie Holt is widowed, pregnant, and about to lose the only father figure she has ever known. The search for a bone marrow donor for her beloved Papa C leads her to the coast of Oregon and down a rabbit hole of dusty genealogy records and decades-old secrets. Meanwhile, across the ocean and the years, Quaker Grace Tonquin feels called to save Jewish children from Nazi Germany, no matter the personal cost. One little girl named Marguerite who can see the colors of people's emotions finds a special place in Grace's heart. Grace realizes that although she can carry the children over the Pyrenees Mountains to physical safety, but the things they have seen and done to survive still haunt their dreams, even in America. And that's the Library Journal Review. Moving on to our streaming recommendations for this week, our first recommendation is the new TV series Murderville, Season 1, which stars Will Arnett, Lillian Bowden, Hannah Wood, and features a variety of well-known guest stars. You can stream this now through Netflix. Each episode of this new series, which is adapted from BBC's Murder and Success Bill, charges Detective Terry Seattle with solving a murder. Seattle gets help from a special guest star in each episode, and there's a catch. The guest stars have not been given scripts and have to improvise their way through the mystery. The guests that include Conan O'Brien, Annie Murphy, and Ken Jeong, this looks like a promising bit of chaos. And that's the Rolling Stone overview. Sounds good to me too. So it's Murderville season one streaming now. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is the new series Reacher, based on the Lee Child novels and starring Alan Ritson, Malcolm Goodwin, and Willa Fitzgerald. You can stream this now through Amazon Prime. It is a Prime original series. So let me tell you a little about the plot. Five years on from the Tom Cruise starring Jack Reacher films, a new adaptation of Lee Childs' crime thriller novel series looks to reinvent the military operative turned investigator for television. Alan Ritson stars as the titular character in the show's first season which is based on the plot of Childs' award-winning Killing Floor book. After he's framed over the first homicide in 20 years in a small Georgian town, Reacher works alongside the authorities. Well, he does when he's not taking matters into his own hands, 
but he does work to uncover the real culprit with the authorities or without as part of a larger conspiracy unravels. Expect plenty in the way of fun-fueled action and character development in this TV adaptation from Prison Break and Scorpion head writer Nick Centora. All eight episodes are available to stream now. And our third streaming recommendation for this week is the series Finding Ola, season one, of course, starring Yasmin Elavid and Hin Sabri. Stream this from Netflix. Finding Ola is a six episode Egyptian series which follows Ola, a divorced single mother, and pharmacist as she embarks on a journey of self discovery filled with unexpected obstacles, as well as eye-opening experiences and shocks along the way. Throughout her journey, she will experience loss, suffering, and fear, which will take her to a road of self-awareness that will allow her to reconnect with her true self. Ola's determination and enthusiasm as well as the support of her family and friends, will be her key motivators. Finding Ola is a dramedy about mother-daughter relationships, friendships, second chances, and self-discovery. So if you're looking for a dramedy, check out Finding Ola, season one of which is available now. And finally, our Hoopla recommendation for this week is actually a downloadable album. I'm floored to discover that this album, Carly Simon's fourth album, No Secrets, is 50 years old this year because I can remember having this on turntables and hearing the songs on this album in the 70s while I was growing up. But this is a top-notch album and it contains the huge hit, The Right Thing to Do. So check out No Secrets, the fourth album by Carly Simon, available for Hoopla. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, let me know. Send an email to me and I'll get back to you. My email address is rhymerl at stls.org. That's R-E-I-M-E-R-L at stls.org. The library is currently open the following hours, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are closed on Sundays, but our digital catalogs, including Overdrive, Libby, and Hoopla, not to mention a bunch of really cool databases if you're doing research, those are all open 24-7, 365. If you have questions about any of our digital offerings, please call the library and we'll be happy to tell you all about them. You can also send me an email and I'll tell you all about them. But I digress, moving right along. The library's website is found at ssclibrary.org, and you see a photo of our website on the left side of your page. If you're looking for research resources available online 24-7, you want to click on the down arrow there on the resources link, which is towards the right-hand corner of our website. You'll see it bordered in red on the screen here, and then you'll get a menu, and you want the third option that says Research and Learning. And that will take you to a page that lists all our databases. If you want the ones that are more academic, scroll all the way to the bottom and click on the list to see all databases. StarCat and its companion app, BookMine. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all card holders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library system. STLS encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. You can find StarCat online at starcat.stls.org, and you can find the BookMine app, which is spelled B-O-O-K-M-Y-N-E, in your app store. So you can access the catalog to search for print books, DVDs, anytime you want to from either the website catalog or the app. The digital catalog and its companion app Libby. 
The digital catalog is like StarCat, except it offers digital content to all library card holders within the Southern Tier Library system. So that means ebooks, downloadable audiobooks, a handful of streaming videos too. So online you can find the digital catalog at stls.overdrive.com or you can download the Libby app to your mobile device. Additionally of note, if you have a dedicated e-reader like the Kindle Paperwhite, you can get digital catalog content, also known as Libby content, on your e-reader. But there's a different way to do that. So if you have questions about how to put ebooks on your dedicated e-reader, just know that you can do that. Just call the library or drop by and we will walk you by the steps, which are a little different depending upon which dedicated e-reader you have. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full-length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Bend County Library card holders with a maximum of 10 checkouts per card per month. Communicating with the library. If you have a question about library services during the pandemic, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's telephone number is 607-936-3713. And you can also connect with the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs. We have several of them. We have the Book Club for Adults blog found at sscbook.club and about, you guessed it, the monthly book club for adults. The Corning NY History blog, which is our local history blog featuring weekly postings. That one's found at corningnyhistory.com. We have Creation Stationery, our makerspace blog, which you can access at creationstationery.com. We also have Storing Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, which is found at storymusings.blogspot.com. And finally, we have Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog, which is found at sscltech.com. And notable, you will also find each episode of Library Connections posted to the blog usually on Tuesday of the week after they air, episodes airing, of course, on Fridays. And our references over the week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections and try not to shovel too much. Curling up with a good book seems to be a great idea for this upcoming weekend and week and you know whenever anyway see you next week